Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm joined by Splice's top laner, Oda Wamine, who just came off a pretty well-earned victory, but it was a tough one. You guys had back and forth for 40 minutes. How did you hang in there when Rocket was giving you a hard time? Uh, well, we were most of the time in the lead, we were in control. It was just kind of um, kind of tricky to get full full control over the game, just because they had um, they had Shen and Camille, so they kind of had the strong uh, strong side lane, and we needed I needed most of the time Cersei to cover me. But I think at one point I just got super strong, and I didn't really need them to cover me anymore, and that's when we kind of got control of the map again. Um, but the game was iffy because um, we 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 entered that Nasher a bit uh, with the Baron call where we lost um, we lost both inhibia, so. That was uh, that was pretty unfortunate from our side, and yeah, even though they got the Nasher over there, I think it was fine for us just because the their only win condition was to kind of dodge fights and disengage from us. And yeah, once we got into that fight at Nasher when they were running away, we they pretty much just get one shot all of them. Absolutely showing your strength there. Now, you guys had a pretty rough start to the split, much like your Aatrox. You turned it around. Now you have two and zero. What was different coming into this week? Uh, I mean. We, we went 0-4, yeah, as you said, and it, it, things kind of got a bit uh, a bit dark in the office, and we kind of had to step up, step it up a little bit uh, with our practice and our mentality because um, we always felt like we were doing enough, you know, coming into this split, and we were, were working hard, which we did in uh, spring, but we kind of got exposed super hard by the top three teams in UL, which kind of beat us every time we faced them, even in spring split. So, yeah, we kind of had to take a look at ourselves and ask if we're doing enough, you know, and the answer was kind of no. And for this week, everyone was just more more motivated because we were kind of in this really big hole and we didn't really seem like we were going to get out of it, but we managed to kind of pick it up. And I think going into the next weeks, we kind of don't have the, the strong opponents anymore with uh, Vitality G2 Misfits gone. We Our schedule is kind of with the weaker teams, so we can, if we want, if we want to show our form from spring and be a top team, then we need to pick up the wins against all the theoretically weaker teams. Fair enough. Now you're going to have a break off going to Rift Rivals as well. How are I you feeling about going into the NA? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, going playing versus NA teams, you could consider that a, a break. So, uh, I mean, we're, we're going there to win. I think, um, even though we we didn't really do well that well in uh, ULCS so far. I think going into going into that tournament, even if we don't perform well, I think it's good just to match against uh, other teams that have different styles. And I think I, I'm pretty confident that we can do well against those teams. Just because, yeah, whenever we play different teams, we kind of it's kind of a meme that we don't adapt. But in scrims, when we play against different styles, we adapt pretty fast. It's just our stage play is kind of poor at the moment. So, yeah, I think going the tournament, we we we're not gonna go there and just lose. You know, I think we have a good shot to kind of beat people and the more the people the person I want to be the most is a uh, hundred probably from 100 teams so fair enough show him that uh, he left the superior region oh all righty all right well I got one last bit of good news for you Odawamne I have just been told you are the player of the game oh wow so congratulations on that one I am truly honored thank you Th thank you Twitter for, for voting for me thank you I'm gonna retweet whatever you guys uh, tweet at me and uh, <laughs> give you free likes and uh, follow me on Twitter yeah oh there we go now back to you guys at the desk take it away Thank you very much, Pyro. You didn't ask him about the bet because, of course, since Euphoria, Daniel Dracos had a bet with Odawamne that if Splice were to beat Rocket, that means that Dracos now has to dress up in a cheerleader costume, cheer for Odawamne, and do a cartwheel. May or may not be live on the show. We'll see. I hope it's live. Yeah. That would be the greatest. It would be. Uh, Oduamne, player of the game, I think it's really funny. Whenever we point something out before the game as a strategy a team should play to, they do the complete opposite. But I think it's a good sign that Oduamne is coming into his own because he was the guy that when Splice started to play better, also was putting up those big performances and felt more comfortable, picked some champions where he could really make something happen. So that's a good sign for Splice overall. Yeah, I mean, they did do what I wanted them to do, but kind of in a different way. So for me, it was all about enabling Niski and making sure Niski can like do things. And, you know, they had Niski going to the top lane and they had, instead of the bottom lane coming up, they had the top side coming down. And for me, that's fine. Like, I'll take it you know, <laughs> yeah. at this point. It, for me, with Splice, it's about confidence building. You know, it's about going into NA. It's about, you know, I personally wouldn't take NA too seriously, like not because NA is like the super free region or anything, but for me, it's about making sure they can go into NA, you know, kind of reset themselves, Practice, yeah. take a bit of a, you know, kind of a breather, 
and come back into EU, you know, offer two a week and hopefully offer decent. Uh, I'm hearing different things for take a breather or practice. We're or going there to destroy yeah. NA Sharks. There is nothing else on the line other than pride for us. We have to reclaim victory of the last time they went up against each other, but also for Splice, getting a 2-0, especially against Rocket, who is a team that is fairly close to them in the standings right now, I think is a pretty monumental victory. And I think they can be happy finally getting themselves a 2-0 week. That they should be. Speaking of pride, let's take a look at the predictions for the day because I think there's a couple of upsets. I know that almost everyone voted for Rocket and I know that Quickshot, Foxdrop and Law voted um, for Splice. So they're not on the ta tables, but, but they are the only people that got the vote correct. What matters the most is that Deficio was also wrong. So as yes. long as he's wrong, everybody's happy. Yes, that is the uh, moral of basically every day <laughs> in the EU LCS. But now let's move on to our next matchup, our final game of the day, G2 Esports versus the Unicorns of Love. G2 Esports is currently at 5-0. and zero. They look poised to take that 6-0, and zero, especially after taking down their nemesis Fnatic yesterday. And it was a, a, a funnel comp again, but a dominating win. Yes, it certainly was. They, initially, at the start of the game, things looked a little shaky, but they found a couple of significant picks. They got gifted a pretty significant Baron <laughs> by Fnatic. And once they just got that slight lead, they just ran away with the game. And Perks once again demonstrated that he can be the big carry for this team. You funnel loads of resources into him, and he does exactly what he is supposed to do. Honorable mention to the entire team, of course, but it always has to be Perks that does all, all the heavy lifting. Well, in the Perks end. said it himself yesterday on PGL. You know, we have to talk about the entire team, but when he plays Zaya and when every single resource is going Give to Give gold him, to someone else and we'll you, talk you about someone else. by talking uh, to him. So, uh, Jarge, this time around, G2 did the funnel comp with Zaya. Do you think there's anything they can't do? I mean, we'll find out in this game, I guess. I mean, if I was Unicorns, I want to see them, you know, do something a bit different. I mean, I personally was really impressed with Hyona and Widid mm -hmm. from that game. And honestly, I just think that they had a really good performance. I think just the whole team is playing really well around Perks. And what's really impressive to me is they're swapping things up. You know, it's not always, you know, Yanko's in the jungle now. Exactly. I mean, we have to call that out for people that may have uh, missed that. Tom Kench was actually laying down bottom he together uh, with Morgana. Jankos has now just become full-time support. Yes. His <laughs> responsibility is backing someone up. He doesn't get to Unlucky. play a league as much as he used to. But a lot of praise needs to go to Wadid, working very closely with Perks. And we were just kind of wondering in the draft, oh no, they're having all these champions banned away from them. Can they really funnel anything else? Turns out that they can. And I wonder what else happens uh, if you just ban all these funnel strategies away? Do they have more? Or will they go back to standard? That's what I'm most excited to see. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure Perks probably has a, another ace up probably. his sleeve, but it's definitely a strategy that the Unicorns of Love should look at because the Unicorns of Love are most definitely underdogs in this matchup. They lost our opening game yesterday. They have their eyes on playoffs. If they don't even get that in summer like they did in spring, it would be dire. So we need to see something from them. You guys already said it. Pick and ban is where they should be looking. Trying to ban out Perks, is it as simple as that? Well, for me, that's kind of one of the big win conditions when you're going up against someone like Perks, taking taking him off as many of these big carries as possible, I feel is extremely important. So ban as many carries as you can, try and force them onto a more standard game plan, and then draft much more towards early game. They found decent success when they play towards the mid lane. They have junglers and supports that can get involved in mid. And if you have a standard game with strong early laners, that's the best case scenario I see for Unicorn standing a chance. And there, Totoro, on your screen, we talk a lot about jungle and mid uh, synergy, but the supports are so incredibly important because they are really setting up most of the advantages for teams overall. So how good is Totoro in that field? Yeah, for me, Totoro is super good. He's definitely one of the standout supports for me, and it's going to be really crucial this game. Typically, if you're going to be playing Funnel Stress, you're not playing hyper-pressure bottom lanes. So if there's any lane to get out of that bottom lane and start really affecting the map, it's going to be this game. I'm going to want to see some big plays from Totoro if this game, if they're going to have any hope of taking down an undefeated G2. Any hope? So is there any hope? Do you see G2 dropping this game? Nope. No, not at all. <laughs> well, we will uh, see. Uh, no, okay, there oh. we go. No, I mean, I, I, in terms of like, is there any hope? It's like, it's maybe yeah, there's maybe. any hope. Like, maybe like 1%. Do you agree as an analyst with the fact that they're going to play this funnel comp until it doesn't work anymore, until they get beaten? Or would you like to see them spice it up and change it up earlier on? I mean, at this point, it's like, the new patch is coming out on the next week. I don't I see any reason why they wouldn't change it. Like, if I was a coaching staff, I'd just be like, yeah, I mean, if we can beat Fnatic, like, who can't we beat? And I don't think they consider you Unicorns of Love to be at the same caliber as Fnatic. So I see no reason for them to change it up. That's yeah, all. Great point. Let's see. The Unicorns of Love did go 2-0 and zero just last week, so it would be awful if they go 0-2 this week. They need to get a win. Let's see if they can make the upset happen as we take it over to Dracos and to Ender.
Thank you, Shocks. Uh, interestingly enough, no. <laughs> Hi, Shocks. You're still on camera. How you doing? <laughs> Hit him with the hey guys in Twitch chat. Yeah. <laughs> So if you're wondering why we're so lost for words, one, Shox was still on camera, and two, Yankos for some reason just pulled back in his chair and went like this a lot, which I assume means it's time for the funnel, baby. Because we're about to get into picks and bands. We're going to find out if it is, in fact, time of the funnel. I'm still Dracos. This is still Ender. And we're here for the final game of the day. Week three of the EU LCS. Final game of the week as well, Ender. I personally think they just told Yankos he doesn't have to play Braum this time. He's like, yeah, baby, give me something good. But uh, Well, he doesn't because Braum is banned. Oh, man. Well, that's actually that's a good thing for Yankos, although maybe now he has to play the Tom Kench and go bottom lane, which would not be nearly as fun for him, although unless he's playing an actual champion, Look, let, I don't think he's going to have a great time. Let's just see. Andrew, that's what I'm see. saying. Let's just see. Let's What's find out where he's going to go, what he's going to do. On I'll this episode, swing, away. Uh, will it funnel? <laughs> I'm ready to find out. Rakan Band 2. We know that one helps with the Will It Funnel strategy. Okay, so the analyst desk was saying ban out all of the carries, but when you talk to Perks on PGL last night, he's like, yeah, dude, we got so many champions you can play, there's no way you ban us out. Unicorns of Love, their approach is to ban all the supports that it can work with. So my eyes are maybe on the Nunu we've seen in uh, a couple different regions, but it's going to be really Kent, hard. Morgana and other options, but... Here's the thing, if Unicorns of Love only use their red side bands to ban supports, okay, Jungle comes out, Nocturne, taking that option away, but immediately now the Aatrox gets locked in, and there are so many power picks available. Yes, a lot of the funneling picks have been taken away, Ender, but all of the other power picks are still up. Yeah, and I'm specifically looking at Unicorn's draft in this game, because I think yesterday, a lot of the issue is that they drafted laners that didn't have priority early on, and Cold wasn't on a champion that could make proactive plays to bail them out. I want to see a lot more aggression out of them, especially because you have to assume, if you're the Unicorns, that you are playing against some sort of funnel strategy. Absolutely, too. Of course, the Aatrox really gives away nothing here. Wonder one of the few people that's been kind of... <laughs> Let loose from the funnel strategy. He still gets to play what he wants. Whatever happens in these games is he's left on that top lane island. Why not? We'll get his hands on the Mundo unless they want to get creative with the swaps there. And interested to see how this matchup plays out. White Knight is kind of middle of the pack as far as top lane goes. Sometimes a little bit worse. But Wonder has been at the top for a while now. There's a lot of pressure to perform. Oh. But they talked about it on the desk, Ender. Pike coming in for Totoro. This is good news. I love this because there's a few supports in the league that have really started gravitating towards this champion. Two of those being. Wadid and Wonder. I know I've been seeing Wadid playing that on the stream, doing a lot of fun stuff, so definitely one of those champions that can make a lot of plays in the early game. And specifically for Totoro, it's about teaming up with Cold to enable their carries to get that early advantage. Now, folks, I don't want to alarm you, but Yankos does have Smite. He may, Wait in fact, second. get to take his own jungle and have his own source of gold income. He will not be the child walking around waiting for his parents to give him an allowance. He will be his own man, but I may be overselling it. Trundle, looks like it could get locked it's in It's actually going to happen. He's Yankos. playing a jungler. We don't know yet. We know that. We don't know yet. Okay, so. Shen has been locked in. This could be many, many flex picks, but it's looking like G2 will not funnel. Conspiracy theory? It's a truck Shen bot lane, Trundle top lane, and they still pull out the funnel, Dracos. I like conspiracy theories. I really hope that doesn't happen, though. G2, they have played a non-funnel before. They played it in their first game of the split, and it did look good. Okay, this is the third back-to-back -back Kindred game here in the EULCS. Now, Cold has had this target band away from it many, many times already in this yep. season. We have not seen it on stage yet, but I have heard from Cold and from other people that he is a monster on this champion. I am excited to finally see it in his hands. And we've already seen what this Kindred can do against the Trundle. It had one game against Trundle, or just popped off completely. But you definitely don't want to fall behind on this champion because it means you won't be able to go into the enemy's side of the map and get those marks and unlock your full potential. And for Cold, he absolutely needs to be on the forefront of his team's damage. Now we're into the second ban phase, Ender. Morgana taken off the board. Vladimir going to follow more of the funneling supports taken away. Of course, I'm not taking any risks here. We want to take some of those champions off the board. And Morgana, of course, just generally strong in the hands of the G2 lineup. Could also be that Morgana in the bot lane position in the hands of Kiarnan, as it was yesterday. Yasuo going to follow. And it looks like Unicorns Love feeling a little bit more confident that this is going to be a standard composition. 
probably going to look for something here in the hands of Samix with a little bit of CC, a little bit of pressure. That has typically been the strongest thing when paired up alongside Pipe. We have also seen picks like the Ziggs do very well. Champions that can function well on their own, clearing away minion waves with relative ease. But what that is going to mean is that Perks will have to blind pick his mid laner. Exile has the chance to find himself a counter pick, and with a jungler that can support him in cold, that could be the place Unicorns look. So he has been game. a huge comfort pick for Exile this season. You can see Rise and Vladimir, two other comfort picks for him, taken off the board, strong picks in their own right. So he's the third champion to enter his pool at the moment. And I think they might just take it here. Yes, he's blind picking it, but it's something that Exile is comfortable on, and we've seen when he can get ahead that he is quite good on that champion. I'm a little bit nervous, though, because Zoe against a big, beefy frontline is hard to play. And that's the hibernating for Yarnin. He's a beast on that champion. It's been like a week, and I think people forgot about oh, this champion. Oh, yes. So that's a Lucian mid. OK, wait. They have funneled a Lucian before. I think it's just a regular Lucian mid. I think it is, because what you can do, especially since Perks is running the cleanse, Lucian has a lot of all-in threat early levels onto the Zoe because he can close the gap with his dash and do a whole lot of burst damage. This could be a spicy one in the mid lane. Horns love now taking their time. The composition really squishy at this point outside of that Mundo. Ezra will be locked in. We'll get a little bit of safety, some options to escape from these slower picks like the Trundle, the Shen, and the Aatrox. And find out where everything goes now. Looks like it will not be a funnel. We'll just be perks in the mid lane with the cleanse to respond to the Zoe sleep. And G2 once again trying their hands at a standard composition. Only the second time this split. A little concerned though for the Unicorns of Love because this feels eerily similar to the comp we just saw Rocket lose with in the last game. Zoe against a big beefy frontline. This time she has a few targets she can try to pick off, but it's definitely going to be a difficult task here for Exile and the rest of the Unicorns. It's interesting too because when we look at G2 Esports and their funneling comp, if they had picked a funneling composition here, we would know very quickly whether or not they were going to just outright win the game because we've seen how clean they are and executing these plays in the early game. Unicorns of Love, though, some opportunities for them to play around the mid lane. That's the thing we love to see. You have a pike there to pull in the CC. The Zoe was set up of her own. Kindred there to back up with a little bit of damage. And if they can just shut perks down completely, it'll be the start Unicorns are dreaming of. This is going to be a, a scrappy one here. We talked a little bit about the safe, independent bot laners. Ezreal definitely falls into that category, so Totoro is going to have the opportunities make some crazy plays around the map. I'm just excited because, again, going into Rift Rivals, we now get to see another standard composition game here out of G2. And Perks was saying that they do have those multiple layers. They can play it all. This is their chance to prove that just a little bit more. Absolutely is, Ender. G2 Esports versus the Unicorns of Love. Will G2 remain undefeated in Europe? That is the question we'll answer tonight. Can G2 play more than just Funnel Comps? And will Unicorns of Love strike back in our final game of week three? Both teams now leaving the base, getting ready. Already pings coming down for the level one as both teams are ready to play around the top side if necessary. We'll find out who's going to make the first play. Seen pikes at level ones do crazy things today, Dracos, but somehow I'm not feeling that same vibe here from Totoro. But I do love the fact that the Unicorns of Love the players we look to on this team, Cold and Totoro, to make things happen are on champions that have advantages in this game. Totoro can group up with Cold and try to bully Yankos around in the jungle, but again, for the Unicorns, they cannot fall behind early. They can't afford to let that happen because team fighting with this composition is going to be very, very difficult. Absolutely, and we've seen what happens when you go late with these difficult XU comps. We saw it last game. It was definitely a struggle the Rockhead lineup, and you can expect G2, and especially Wonder, to have a similar level of confidence to Odoamne. White Knight, making good use of the bone blading there, just to throw down a bit of damage, although while they battle over the ward, you are going to see junglers start to get those starts. 125 and counting, 130. will really kick off the start of the game, mid lane meets. And when we look back on it, we got to keep our eyes, I think, to a certain degree here on Cold. This is a man that I'm very interested in. The Kindred, another pick that's really rising in popularity. And this is the guy that is kind of the catalyst in the team's action. And this is... Thank you, stats team. So, who's the real jungler? Yeah, who's the real... Can Yankos even jungle, really? Isn't I this don't guy know. a support main? That's what I thought. I don't know what Perks is doing playing mid lane. 
Oh, Cold's going for level two, actually. Oh, I like this. Oh, oh, flash forward. Moving in. Oh, that is, that is tragic. Flash traded for Flash in the end. They're happy to have that advantage, but Yankos is here trying to take this one down. It looks like he is going to be able to cut through it. Cold knows that this is happening. The smite drops. That means it is secured. Cold is going to need to look for the rinse and repeat if he actually wants to get a kill on the top side. That's really unfortunate for Cold because not only does the gank not result in a kill, he does get the flash that is good, but he loses that mark on the top side of the map when he should, in theory, have the pressure advantage to take that one away from Yankos. This mid lane matchup that we do have to continue to look at, there is some spice that can be done by Perks. Absolutely, and when you look at Cold, he's a guy that's usually present in these mid lane matchups. Now, yesterday, they play, tried to play around the mid lane as they always do, but Vitality were ready to punish. Vitality crushed them in those matchups. We talked about the trap for Unicorns and Love being a bit of a weakness. Exile still playing with fire, though. We just have to keep our eyes on Cold this game and the Unicorns of Love. See if they change their style at all. The good news is they've already played around top a little bit more, so maybe this is a sign of things to come. But it is still very likely that players are made here around this mid lane. But did just spamming that laugh in the river, just having a good time with things, but especially with Illusion in the mid lane, Zoe as well, there's a lot of kill threat both ways if either party makes mistakes. You have to assume that Yankos and Cold will have a distinct focus on that area of the map. Absolutely. Totoro. <laughs> what? He's just disappearing. He's trying to funnel Cold, I think. Eh. Eh. I'm going to say, for the will it funnel question, I'm going to say no, no this time, Ender. Not going to funnel. On the bot side, interestingly enough, Totoro opting for the Relic Shield. Will help him push the wave out a little bit more. Will match, but I know that's not your personal preference there, Ender. Dude, I like the Ancient Coin, personally. The movement speed, the CDR you get on Pike when you have such high cooldowns, as well as the Mana Restore to allow you to make a few more fishes happening with the Bone Skewer. But I'm glad you brought up this bottom lane, because we already saw a Pike do disgusting things to immobile mages. The Zyra from a few games ago didn't have a great time, and I think a lot of people will look at this and say Heimerdinger falls into a similar situation. The difference is he can put down that turret in the blink of an eye and block the hooks, which is a pretty sweet counter to any type of hook champ. Also, if you've ever tried to dive a Heimerdinger in a solo queue game and you don't have an absurd amount of burst damage, you'll know the horrible experience of him walking around you in circles while his turret kills you. So. Big risk there. Now Yankos. We're trying to shut down White Knight here. White Knight, of course, still has a flash from the earlier play. We'll dodge out on the dark flight. Cold here for the follow up. Ooh, Cleaver lands, but the mid little bit of minion block there going to stop a further chase. So flash for flash, and the end traded on the top side. Yankos keeping his, though, means that both gangs work out in favor. Oh, oh. flash taunt from Woody. That's oh. the perfect start. Exile now running the flash out. Ignite taking. Can he get a sleepy trouble? Will goes down. Burning. No. Oh. That was so close. Perks. He took the cleanse, so 19 HP. Shout out to the production team. Quick check on that one for me. Now Totoro looking to fire back. Cold is here. Ghost water dive, but Perks is not scared of ghosts. Yeah, Perks is like, what are you going to do, man? You're, I mean, you're Lucian's just job is like to kill <laughs> ghosts, right? Or spirits or whatever. I don't know. Lore is hard. But yeah. I just feel like if anyone's not going to be scared of a ghost water dive, it's going to be Lucian. He's the Light Slinger, I believe. Expels evil if you watch the climb video at the start of the season. He's Kullian straight through those guys. He also got Essence Reaver before it was reworked in that video. Look, he was using his E way too Spoiling quickly. content. <laughs> Red Detectives couldn't see that one coming, huh? Couldn't guess no, the they specific couldn't. item. <laughs> oh, Hex Flash. Came on for a little bit of damage here. Ooh, may try to extend the trade. No man on perks. This is actually huge. The Ignite takes down. Oh. Paddlestar comes back. Wadid is. Oh! Wadid is the homie. He just blocked, or would have blocked anything that came further. Now White Knight needs to run for his life, but a lot of action there in the mid lane. Shout out to Exile, making good use of that Hex Flash. And people might ask, why Hex Flash on Zoe in the mid lane? The immediate answer is, oh, it gives you a little bit of extra range for damage on the Q, but also you look at her, that extra damage from using a Summoner spell off of her W, so just that little bit more to try to find the kill down there on the perks, but Exile actually used his Ignite in lane very early on in a level two or level three trade, and that meant it wasn't up for that exchange and lost him the kill. Yeah, and despite, of course, you know, seeing that really well uh, played trade out there from Exile, Perks still with a pretty significant lead in the mid lane, looking pretty good despite the funnel composition not being the team's primary strategy. And, you know, we see 29% gold percent, 63 KDA. Keep in mind, he's only died once, so if he dies here, that KDA is going to get cut in half. Channeling, waiting, oh. holding on to it. Perks, oh my god, looking into the face of death and just saying, you go first. That's just the ultimate mind game, because Totoro's holding on to the Bone Skewer for as long as possibly wants to wait until Perks uses the dash, but doesn't come through, and Perks wins out that uh, 200 IQ battle. 
incredibly low ping there. The, the Zero ping. I mean, that's just a crazy moment. Crazy moment there. The patience coming in. I thought Totoro was throwing it out. I thought Totoro had somehow, you know, broken his cue, I'll be honest. But it didn't happen. Didn't come out. Didn't need to throw it. In the end, Perks, good patience. Pays off for him. 55 CS. You can see he ran out of mana earlier. Not going to be a problem anymore as he does grab this blue buff. May not be a funnel comp, but Yankos, not completely fed up, will still give the blue buff over to his game. Yeah, I do also want to draw our eyes down to the supports levels. Wadid is only level 3, Totoro is only level 4. This just goes to show how supports are playing in the current meta. They're never down bot lane with their duo partner. No, no, no. It's all about trying to find those openings like Totoro almost got on the perks in the mid lane. And the CS not too different. Garnet with a small lead here due to the pressure he's able to put down. Samix holding his own as best he can. But we're going to see what G2 do with the bot lane pressure now. Totoro still roaming, not worried about leaving his support under the tower. Why not moving down onto Yankos? Kindred is here as well. They really want to take this one. 700 health. Ooh, Yankos going to get the smite away, though. That is a solid start. Does have to flash out to safety. White Knight, is he willing to commit a little bit more? Doesn't have the flash. Is it going to go for it? Here comes Totoro. Perks knows it's there. Hook going out. Perks just waits. Nice and patient. Dashes it out. Very well done by him. Perks, this entire laning phase has been doing a great job himself. Almost a 15 to 20 CS lead at the moment. Wonder doing very well for himself in the top lane as well. It feels like all the lanes for G2 at the moment have the priority. But once again, it's time for the bot lane. Samix. Oh, beautiful info buffer there. Wait, the hook is going to go in. Holds oh. it right back. Oh, that's a solid start for the unicorns. That's the pike, baby. Only level four on with D, so didn't have a whole lot of HP to tank up that turret. Absolutely did not. Well played there. Totoro happy to have a little bit of extra experience. Samix happy to have a little bit of extra gold. Solid start for Unicorns. We said they needed something to get them going. Okay. Super trouble the connects. Good start. Waiting on it. Ooh, good damage. Not quite enough to 100 to zero him. The Ignite is available. Yankos is here. We've seen this one before. We did last time. Almost getting the kill. 19 health was all that stood left for Exile. Coling comes out. Exile needs to run. Here comes the Aatrox. Exile gonna dodge out. Gonna dodge right back. So you can throw a bubble connects. Sleep under the tower. Wonder now getting knocked out by the tower shot. Cold leaping forward, but an excellent dive from G2. So well done. Wonder using his priority that he had with the shoving lane in the top lane. He sacrifices minions to his own tower just to make this play work out in mid lane. Good stuff by G2 on a team level to set up perks. The hook, can you predict? No. Nope. Okay. So perks is doing that, you know, brilliant thing where instead of juking, he just stands still. And then Totoro mind games himself and misses the hook. Every time. I mean, it's a prediction. And now we can see good use of the Hex Flash. Sadly, better use of the ward from Unicorns of Love. They yeah. know what's going on here. And Wadid just assumes that Pike is never going to be in this lane, but Totoro shows up at exactly the right moment. There's no way for Wadid to get out of that one. If he runs in a straight line, he's going to get hooked. And just well played from Totoro. This is a guy we've been praising a lot on the Unicorns of Love lineup. We're on the desk as well. Sadly, not enough to give them a gold advantage. 15.6 to 15.1. Things just about even. G2, though, with a bit of vision here down on cold. Means they know exactly what's happening. I still think it's a very important kill for the Unicorns to get bot side, though, because this matchup, the more I think about it, Heimerdinger into Pike is really, really rough. Heimerdinger is going to constantly shove in that bottom lane, and it makes sure that Totoro is... He doesn't have that ability to be able to roam to the mid lane quite as much. Whenever he goes there, Samix is at risk of being dope. So his timing there, expecting the move out of what did, was very, very well done by Totoro. Well played. G2, though, in the meantime, going to take advantage of the top lane priority that Wonder has been building for this team. Take this Rift Herald uncontested. Happy to have it here 10 minutes and 50 seconds into the game. Of course, you can see the early executioners calling. Wonder clearly focused on his lane opponent. And uh, Perks, his stats right now look like he's in a funnel comp because he's in the 102 CS, a 20, a 30 CS lead almost over Exile in the mid lane, showing the power of being able to make these counter matchups happen. Remember, Exile opted into this 1v1. Not using the cleanse, not using the flash. Good patience, using the coaling to fire back on Exile. Still losing the trade, not giving up any summoners. Exile with no ignite means Perks can play a little bit more comfortable, a little bit safer. Cold is going to look to grab an objective for the team. Rift Herald could prove to be more valuable depending on how G2 uses it. I really like the vision setup from the Unicorns, the deep vision in this bottom side, because once Kindred gets that Blood Razor, it's so easy with that percent HP damage to take down neutral objectives like the Mountain Drake, and it won't be possible for G2 to contest now that Samix and Totoro have the advantage in the bottom lane, it seems. And Fjorn is so patient on this play. Ooh, Totoro taking so much damage back. Passive is going to be 
Doing a little bit, but Gifts of the Drowned Ones cannot heal him through everything. And really across the board, when you look at just laning stats, outside of bot lane, G2 just are pretty much dominating across the board, Ender. That's the one concern I had about Kindred, because again, yesterday, the Unicorns had a lot of losing lanes early on, and Cold, I believe he was playing the Nocturne, he didn't have the abilities to force those early moves. In this game, it was that one level two gank in the top lane that didn't end up netting anything more than a flash. Cold never returned to that lane, although now maybe has an opportunity to collapse on Wonder. The champion's nuts. <laughs> he can do it all, Dracos. Dark Flight, low cooldown, rather have the Blast Cone. Could make it out, although he's going to need to flash over that wall. Knows that he does not have the luxury of reviving here. Sleep does connect. Exile going to push forward. Has to be careful. Uh -oh. The pulls back. Perk's not going to hesitate to move forward. Hook, is it going to connect? Totoro hitting the field goal here. And now Hyarna takes bot lane tower. So across the board, G2 are winning out on these exchanges. Yes, Flash is lost on the top side, but about a 2k gold lead in G2's favor is going to be a good look. Perk's now running for his life. Red buff is there, but if they can't proc it, they can't get anything else. And Perks, 28 CS lead ender, dodging all of these ganks, and taking so much of Unicorn's love song. That's It's so painful, too, if you're a Unicorn's love fan, it's like, yes, punish Perks in the mid lane, gank this guy, shut him down, and they've tried so hard, but he's just been able to dodge around it every single time. There's been some pretty good vision control from G2 around this middle lane for a large part of this early game, and it's really stopped the ability for the Unicorns to make those plays matter and to make them work out. So. To be fair, it feels like G2 might just have a track record for success. We have to see now. Interesting. Nikos gets pulled back over the wall, but Wadidi and Yarnin are here. They're in the middle uh -oh. of everything. That is not oh. at all what they need. Cold going to use the ultimate. Totoro in the middle of it, too. Wants to make it out. Cold going to try to leave to safety. Exile is in the middle of everything, but no. Heimerdinger going to grab the kill onto Kindred. Oh. That's the double. He doesn't even go over the wall. He is sitting in that Krug camp. Happy to just clean up. Throwing so much damage over that wall, and Wonder during this play rotates down into the mid lane, shoves that wave out, and Detour gonna get yet another turret, the cherry on top of that beautiful fight. And you can see G2 learning from the game they watched before. Slow and steady wins the race with the style of composition. They've seen the Kindred vulnerable, don't want to give it that time, and just pushing forward, making the most out of this Rift Herald. Samix is here, but has to be careful. Turret likely going to be taken down in the coming minutes. It's so, so low, and this is the real benefit for G2. Taking all these minions in the jungle away from Cold. He's on a champion that needs resources, needs gold and experience, and Yankos at the moment has a distinct advantage. Even though UOL are trying to punish him, they find the engage, but Yarnin and Wadid are right there. Look at the damage from this Heimerdinger over the wall, finding the snipes, and Exile tries to make something happen, but it's not enough. He doesn't have the damage to deal with Yankos. That was the deep sigh, the cocked head. You can see the frustration on the face of Cold. It's been a rough week for Unicorns to love. They started off so rough, turned it around, coming into week two. Now in week three, things are starting to fall down once again. It's a tough opponent for to be sure. Odds are stacked against them. Jarge gave him a, a lowly 1% chance for the upset. All things considered, though, only 3k down. They have a Mountain Drake backing them up. It is going to get a little bit worse here as Perk continues to pressure on the top side. And we'll see how long Unicorns of Love can hold out and if they can find an opportunity to come back. Totoro. Both not going to connect. Perks. Look for the polling. Is going to take the tower. Totoro with a body block. He does not care. I mean, Unicorns are trying to two versus one him, but there's always the threat of that stand united to make that an even fight. But I don't know, 2v2 would seem uneven because right now Perks counts as two players himself. And you gotta know when you're Perks, when you look at that team and you go, ah, I see no point in clicks. I'm playing Lucian, I will outplay you if you come in. I will dodge your skill shots. I do not care about the Mystic shot, I do not care about the Bone Skewer. And that, that is confidence right there from the G2 mid -level. And he's made it work in every single engagement. Every single opening you all thought they had was just an outplay from Perks. He was able to dodge away from it and now, this vision control for G2, I'm just noticing, is absurd on the top side of the map. There is nowhere that Cold can go without being spotted out. It just protects Perks in his split push in the top lane. Yeah, and you can see Hyarnan taking him home in the mid lane. He's going to be the one to keep up the pressure. Now throwing okay. down the tower. Ignited already. Throwing back the Paddle Star, trying to clear the waves. Taking a lot of poke in exchange, but Unicorns of Love once again looking for opportunities. This must be the sixth, seventh, maybe eighth time that they've tried to force a player on mid lane, and G2 are just ready every single time. The issue for them is G2 could be anywhere. They're always in the fog of war. UOL do not know what's going on. And 
G2 are trying to keep up the pressure. Kjarnan's actually teleporting back into this middle lane. They're gonna try and cancel oh, these recalls. Super Trouble Bubble goes out. Oh. Don't know if he's gonna be able to get it. Totoro pulling back, trying to peel for the team. That tier two you predicted to fall, Ender, will fall. 17 minutes and 10 seconds into the game. G2 extend almost a 6K gold lead. Now they may look to break open the base. Heimerdinger is there. Excellent sieging. I don't even know if they can cut through Yankos. Oh, fire the ultimate. Oh, almost cold. But a brief respite will mean that cold survives. And this is some clinical League of Legends. Fnatic stomped earlier today when it came to Giants, but G2 are just choking unicorns out. And this is just the hallmark of a top tier team. Misfits have done it. Fnatic did it earlier today. Now G2 are trying to make that three peat. And with Mountain Drake spawning up two and a half minutes before a Baron buff with a Heimerdinger, that becomes uh, the immediate place you look for G2 to close it out. And it's a good look. It's something we've been talking about all day, something that's on everyone's mind is Rift Rivals. G2 coming in as the number two seed. It's a good look that they can play more than just funnels, that they're showing us that they can still play this clinical, clean, standard style of League of Legends. And overall, if you're a fan of Europe, this is what you want to see. If you're a fan of Unicorns of Love, of course, you're a bit disappointed, but at least there's the consolation prize. You can hope for that Rift Rivals title. And for Unicorns of Love, just looking at G2 as an opponent, it doesn't feel like there's any obvious weakness that they can try to exploit. Of course, before today, it had all been about putting as many resources as you could into perks. So ganking the mid lane and trying to shut him down was the go-to strategy. But that doesn't work when perks just, you know, tells you that he's one of the best mid laners in Europe. He beat out Capped just yesterday and proves that you can't shut that man down. No, and historically you would have looked bot lane, you would have looked Yarn and sure. indeed to be shut down, but this summer, this meta is empowering them. They look so good both as a duo and when it comes to playing with the team and showing once again that they can fit comfortably into a standard composition. Flexible enough that Wadid can be the Rakan to follow perks around in the funnel. It's a good look for the G2 on it. Right, and, and what happens when you have to ban out this funnel strategy? You ban three supports. And all of a sudden, you leave open Hjarnin's signature Heimerdinger that he's going to be able to win every single lane matchup it feels like on. He was just basically dropping down his turrets and Solo took down that turret. Oh! 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 What? No. Today Remember? has been the day of one-shots, Dracos. <laughs> Flashbacks. Oh, no. It just keeps happening, folks. I can't, I, I, and yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think of something to say about this man. He walked into Heimerdinger's jungle. Heimerdinger said no. He said no trespassing. I have the right to shoot you. He shot him. Well, there you go. He's dead. <gasps> oh, no. It just does not stop from G2. Uh, I mean, that Baron buff we talked about, it just now spawned up. G2, this is the, uh, there you go. Here the, we go, guys. We're going to contest a blue. The damage. This uh huh. Tell me about it, Dracos. What did you see okay. happen? Until I saw the blue spawn, I thought he was legit just waiting there. Like, I'm going to kill the first person who walks into my jungle. And then the blue spawn, and it made sense. But just fantastic play from Garnet. 3 0 on the timer. If you had told me that this is the champion he popped off, I would have assumed you were, you were BSing me at the start of the season. But definitely a, a powerhouse player when it comes to pulling up this pick. Oh, perks. Well, oh, the sidestep once again. The Ignite does go down. Totoro on the way in. Deed here on the side, though. The Phantom Undertow going to be used to pull him back to safety and still just poking at G2, looking for an opening. Trying to find a hole in that armor, but it's just not happening. G2, I mean, they can just look for an all-in if you all over Finally get a hook! Oh, no. Well, ulti? I, don't, I actually don't think Totoro has the damage to execute perks with the ult right now. He saw it. He hooked it. He ignited. He clearly wanted it but it just did not happen. Yeah, Perks is level 13. Let this sink in for a second. Perks, Yarnin, and Wonder are all level 13. That is a distinct advantage over members like Totoro, who's just on level nine, because they're absorbing all this golden experience out of Colt's jungle. It's, it's really rough now for this Kindred to find any kind of an impact when she's just been starved like it feels. Yeah, absolutely. Totoro has to be careful here. He was the hunter for a while. A predator to prey, it looks like it. He's charging up that hook, but I think at this point they might not mind getting pulled in. Pulling does come out. Perks takes a bit of poke. Garnet is on the way in, setting up towers, waiting, hoping the Unicorns of Love are going to push into him. Yanko's actually getting chunked out. Sleepy Trouble Bubble does land. That could be good. Eyes on the oh. hook. Garnet in the middle of everybody, but he just fires right back. Wonder with the turn and burn. Two for the Aatrox. Samix now running for his life. 
Blasco's gonna take him to safety, but Baron now in the sights of G2. If they want it, they can take it. Only two men left standing on the sides of UOL. So, uh, NA, they're gonna need a little bit of handicap in Rift Rivals. I'm gonna give them a hint. Ban Yarnens Heimerdinger, because that is absolutely disgusting. That man just solo carried that team. I'm just gonna say, you and Betty just keep posting hints specifically for how to beat G2. I, mean, I feel like you've got it out for him. Teams need it. <laughs> Look at this. It's it's so clean and methodical from G2. 9K gold lead, mountain to mountain, five turrets to one. 5-0 G2 about to be a 6, or 5-0 G2 about to be a 6-0 G2. And Unicorn Glove looking well on their way to 2-4. And you can see why. The beautiful turn and burn here. Mm -hmm. Kjarnan, get ready for it, because he's going to give him the big E on three members. Gets a stun on two, the damage on to a third. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, those moments, if you ever play a game, you know those moments. Because those are the moments you scream, it's like 2 in the morning, and your significant other or your mother goes, What are you doing? But you know it was worth it. Because you shouted, it was that wombo combo, and it just feels so good. It feels so, so good. Now, G2, they're going to be setting up. All right, Moose, what you got for us? Looking like a 6-0 G2 versus 6-0 Misfits after Riff Ride. Well, I mean, I don't know when he tweeted this, but it, it's not a very hard prediction at this point to get I feel like he could have tweeted this a few days ago and still been fairly accurate. It's a good look. Unicorns of Love just haven't been able to compete this game. They're getting split across the map. Yarnan throws down the big tower. Exile is now running for his life. Perks uh -oh. is ready to kill everybody. Oh. Yarnan grabbing one. Perks getting one in this change. The Zoe is dead. White Knight now running. He's just a meat shield for the squishier members. And Perks is fearless. Black Cleaver, Blade of the Room King, a BF sword. Zerker's Greaves making it look Easy. Wonder's gonna back. He's got TP. Says, guys, I'm gonna heal up. I'm gonna buy an item. I'll come back. We'll win this game. And G2 did not expect it in a world where Fnatic was still on top, where Fnatic had so many members up. But they are looking more dominant than ever. Looks like they may just end the game. Are they gonna play with their food a little bit? We will find out. But 9 1 the kill score. 13k gold lead. Totoro looking for a last. Second desperation play, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Perks. Perks. The flash forward wants a little bit more. Ooh, cannot get it. Lamb's respite buys a bit of time, trying to turn, but the Nexus will fall in the end. G2 Esports, 6-0 in the LCS. G2 look pretty good, Dracos. They uh, they don't make many mistakes. Perks, pretty good mid laner, sort of, you know, won that game so, Ooh, so hard yeah. there. Except his KDA went from above 60 oh, to no. uh, 30. He died one time. I don't remember the exact number. Someone's gonna tell me. He died right at the end. But he died, and that cut his KDA in half. So if we're honest, what a misplay! Misplay. But uh, oh god. Okay, so guys, so you, you remember the, the Zoe game from Fnatic where we checked in for the damage? This game, it's not the mid laner, despite Perks playing like a fiend. It is in fact Kjarnan. Ender, give us the numbers. What we got? Okay, so Kjarnan's rolling in here with just under twenty thousand damage. And uh, the next highest, of course, was going to be Exile in the mid lane with around 1,300. So it's not that insane. What was that that you said uh, earlier? You wanted to give some advice to the NA teams. Uh, so uh, it is Banheimerdinger. Okay. Because Harnan had all the answers in this game. He shut down the Pike, didn't let him roam. And when Pike did roam, he took that bottom lane turret. And that wasn't it. The team fights were even more nasty from Yarn. Absolutely. The triple grenade. The Boom. power grenade. Into the double Aatrox knockup. Cool. Aatrox, wait, we're on patch 813 for Rift Rivals, right? We are. Is new Aatrox a new one? I believe he would be. I should know that, folks. I'm sorry, I do not. Okay, well, maybe it'll be with new Aatrox. Oh, yeah. Another three man knockup. Multiple times in a row. Multiple There's lots of knockups. Oh man. Wonder, he could make any champion look good though, I feel like. I mean, it's definitely true. And despite Cole trying to get a little bit of early action there on the bottom side, I like that Yankos, the man on your screen right now, responded, came back up, he gave Wonder that attention. He said, I'm gonna back your lane up, I'm gonna set you up for safety. And I think really when you look back at this game, obviously Hyarnan was a monster. But you also look at the I'm just gonna make up a bigger number every time. 5,000 mid lane ganks 5, that Perks dodged, that Perks lived through, where he shouldn't have. The time he almost killed Exile and turned it around, that is an all-star performance. There were so many crazy things in this game, but I think 
Europe going into Rift Rivals have to look, have to be very, very confident. Not only G2 looking so clean, Splice, they had a 2-0 week. The only loss one of our three teams had was from Fnatic against the impossible to beat looking G2. Very true. I think overall it's, it's a solid, solid state for G2 to be in. The battle for the top of the Europe just continues to go on. And really I think it's so hard because earlier today we talked, we were on the desk uh, for, for pre-game. Uh, Ready check. Ready check. I want keep wanting to call them. So ready sorry. check. Hashtag ready, ready check. check on Twitter. Thirty minutes before the show every day. That's true. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> uh, so we're talking about this, and it's like it's really hard to talk between G two esports and Misfits, who's actually on top. And when every time G two esports show us something new, it's like another notch in their belt, like something else in their favor when it comes to deciding who is actually the best in Europe right now. There's so many fun matchups to look at in that game. I think Maxlor versus Yankos actually playing a jungler is a pretty good one, but also that bottom lane is really exciting now that Kjarnan is stepping up in the summer split. Absolutely. Well, as we close out the week, you guys at home can take to Twitter and vote for your players of the game. This time it stands between Kjarnan, Perks, and Wonder. And this one's really tough. I, I still feel like it's Perks, but I don't, I don't want to influence you guys, so forget I said that. I already said it, so it's too late. But You anchored them, Draco, so you're not supposed to do that. Yeah, I think... The integrity of this poll has now been thrown out the window. I'm going to say you should vote for the other two guys. Now we fixed it. Is that how that works? I don't think so. All right, okay. <laughs> All right well, for more on G2's win, let's hear from their jungler and their top laner. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I am, in fact, joined by Wonder and Yankos. And guys, G2 didn't play a funnel comp. They said it couldn't be done. Tell me about your composition today. I played the jungler, and I'm really glad. <laughs> but um, I didn't do much this game, so that feels bad, uh, because I didn't carry. So I guess next game I'll probably play support. I will get the uh, downgrade again. Also, um, when they were trying to kind of talk about us right there, they said that I'm a jungler, you know? But I'm actually not a jungler, I guess. I don't know anymore. I'm just playing top lane and playing jungle. It's, it's weird, but it was fun today. Well, you were able to help your buddy right over here quite a lot after he got, uh, if I might quote, cheesed at level two. So wonder, I mean, what do you have to say about that? I feel like Genkos is backing you up all the time. Yeah, I mean, like these two games, to, uh, this week I got cheesed level two, or like I got level two ganked at least. And um, today I didn't die, so that's a plus. Uh, but I was playing Aatrox today and I was not very useful either. And uh, so I'm probably going back on a tank as well next week or at Rift Rivals. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, like, Jankos and me, we have like an all right synergy. Of course, you can't really see it when we are playing because we are playing funnel comps and I'm kind of playing without a jungler. So I'm playing without my body Jankos here. But yeah, I, I, think, I think I did all right. And uh, I kind of called that Mundo had no flash, even though it was Kinder to flash, I think. And that's why I like, I like baited him to come top, you know, even though he, like, he thought it was a free kill, but it was really not. It was just a flash burn. I'd like to add something. First of all, Wadi died, and he's really bad, and he should improve. And the way he gave up the kill was, it just made me disappointed with him. Because I would never do that as a, the best support in Europe. That's first of all. Okay, so you're gonna fight for, for who gets the smite. All right, well, let's, let's move away from this one. I want to sow any discord in your team. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned Rift Rivals coming up. Wonder, you guys are gonna be heading over to NA next week. Out of the teams you're gonna be facing up against, do you have somebody that you're really looking forward to playing against? TSM, no, I joke. I'm <laughs> Team Liquid, probably. I don't know. Like, uh, Team Liquid is like the best team in NA right now, and uh, I'm not really sure about One Hundred Thieves. I think they're playing with like Sop, Jungle, and Top Laner as well. And wait, who is the other team? Uh, it would be Echo Fox. Yeah, Echo Fox. Yeah, Huni, my brother. But I'm probably not playing against Huni. You know, I'm probably playing against like Dardoch or Rengar or something. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what goes on in the NA meta. I mean, for me, I really don't mind playing against Liquid nor Echo Fox, even though I think they're really good teams. I just want to destroy Proly. And um, the fact that he abandoned Europe and he left to NA. Don't talk to <laughs> player. The fact that he abandoned Europe and he left for NA, this is just so sad. So I just want to crush his dreams. Also, we have Ryu there and Levi, and I really respect them and I really like them and I know them as players, so it's fun. Absolutely. Always seeing, good seeing uh, the sportsmanship coming as well as the uh, will to crush the life out of NA. Okay, but, but Rift Rivals is going to be all good and fun. You guys also will be coming back here for week four. You'll be facing off against Misfits, the only other 6-0 team. And I want to ask both you guys how you think you're going to stack up, especially starting with you, Yankos. How do you think you stack up as a jungler, assuming you get to play jungle against Maxlor? Yeah, I think I will be all right. I think Maxlor is, I mean, Misfits as a whole is probably one of the best teams in Europe right now. I think... Uh, 
I'm not sure if they fix their issues from Spring Split, but the meta just suits them way better. And if they get early lead, they can actually close out the games now because it's like way easier. Uh, but I think it's not going to be as easy against us in the early game as uh, they have it against the other teams. Uh, so I'm pretty excited for this matchup. Awesome. Now over to you, Wonder. Uh, comparing against Alfari, if it's a tank v tank, if it's a carry v carry, what do you think is going to happen there? Well. Personally, from practice experiences and just uh, like past seasons as well, I think Afari is probably the top laner that is the hardest to play against. He's probably the, the one I feel like is the best right now as well. So playing against him is going to be, be pretty fun. And like, I don't know, like on stage, it seemed like at this last split that they had some struggles and he didn't really shine as much as maybe he, he could or should. So I'm just going to look forward to playing against him and seeing like, what's the deal or if they play the same on stage as like they do in practice as well because in practice they are they are a pretty good team so yeah what is also weird is that he didn't shine when he was playing the carries but now when he's playing mundo he's destroying everyone mundo's yeah, op yeah mundo is op or maybe tanks are just superior and wonderwell should play tanks and i should play carry junglers and not supports and that would be great i have so many tank games to split like i, I don't i don't know like all right all right i hate to cut you guys off on that bombshell we're going to toss it over to the post game lobby